that we are, we are continuing with the series that we initiated on Dam's Daily page and our YouTube channel. Recently, we have started a series called as Medicine Unplugged. So, in continuing with the series, today we are presenting to you a case with a little bit of a twist. Now, what we have done is, today we have created a question based approach. In today's episode, we will discuss with a clinical case and we will show you how that case is integrated to our image. Okay? And how to approach such questions would be our message for the day. This is the same approach which is used in USMLE step 1 very often and even in India in an exam called as NIMHANS where they have a lot of neurocentric questions. Similar approach is used. And a similar approach is also used in exams like AIMS but the question length is not so long in AIMS that is a slight difference. So today I have with me Dr. Sachin. He is a renowned psychiatrist and a renowned psychiatry faculty. If you have, you know, if you have heard his class before I am sure many of you are, you know, actually very fond of listening from him. So today I have with me Sachin and me, I am Sumer Sethi, I am a radiologist. Together we will look at the question together and try to give you an answer as an integrated approach. So I hand over the question to Sachin to discuss his side of the question. Hello, uh, good evening everybody. So today uh, we have brought you a clinical question. In this clinical question, I will tell you how to approach such question when this pa type of patient comes and how, what is the, they are likely to ask you on this. The case is a 65 year old lady is brought to your geriatric clinic. The age is important, 65 years, geriatric clinic is important and she is a female. All these points are important by her daughter who says that her mother has been behaving strangely. Now strange behavior, abnormal behavior at an age of 65 years points toward some neuropsychiatric disturbance which we are not yet sure now behaving strangely over past one year she doesn't rec easily recognize easily the relatives of the family whom she was able to do earlier what is this sign unable to recognize familiar uh, faces is a sign in psychiatry called prosop agnosia prosop agnosia p r o s a p agnosia agnosia is inability to perform sensory recognition function inability to recognize familiar faces is prosopagnosia so we have got one finding which is a cognitive finding sometimes she often forgets where she ha whether she has cleaned the household utensils or not now like cleaning household utensil is a part of your recent memory like we have done it in last 24 hours so it is a recent memory loss she forgets she ha where she has kept the keys she was not able to, uh, to recall the name of her high school. Not able to recall the name of her high school is a remote memory loss. So we have amnesia of recent and remote memory. Along with that, we have got agnosia. Continuing further, analyzing the question. Although these symptoms have been progressive over the past one year, this is important. It is a progressive degeneration, progressive deterioration of the condition over the past one year. Previously, she was a very well behaved and educated lady who used to take care of her social role activities and family care and nowadays she is mostly confined to herself. This is a one of the behavioral symptoms we are getting. This disease presents with neurological symptoms, psychiatric symptoms. So, it is an integrated neuropsychiatric disturbance. Nowadays, I will tell you what is the name of the disease. So, you have got behavioral symptom. Ro nowadays, she is mostly confined to herself, less social interaction and often is suspicious of neighbors trying to do some harm on her. Suspicious that neighbors trying to do some harm on her is a psychotic feature which we call as delusion of persecution. Delusion of persecution. Next. Can you, can you summarize Sachin for us that what are the key things that th we should take home from the history itself? Um, like what I could understand as a lay student maybe would be that you know recent memory loss Recent memory loss Distant plus remote, remote memory, loss. memory loss and Ag then agnosia, some delusion, some delusion agnosia plus behavioral disturbances. Okay, the okay. case is yet to be completed. Okay. We will go ahead. So, this is how matlab, you summarize as this a second because mm -hmm. what happens is sometimes students are not able to take out what are the key things from the history. Okay. She often has problem wearing clothes and does mistakes in cooking as well. This is the day to day activity which we call as activities of daily living like cooking, wearing clothes. This all requires cognition, cognition, higher mental functions and abilities. So higher mental functions that is we are looking for something a pathology in the cortical system, cerebral cortex. Daughter also says that mother efficiency is reportedly decreased especially in multitasking. What do we mean by multitasking? It is also a higher mental function which is called as executive function which includes planning, organizing and sequencing of things. So. I am stressing on the key points in the history, one year illness, memory loss. Memory loss is the key feature, but 
a lone memory loss is not diagnostic of the disease which we are talking about other cognitive functions are equally affected not able to wear clothes dressing apraxia having difficulty in household activities activities of daily living affected agnosia that is inability to recognize family members and also we have executive functional loss so we are talking of a cognitive disturbance the dsm5 classification name it as neurocognitive disturbance and what we call it as is dementia dementia is a disease characterized by amnesia loss of memory plus two out of four domains affected apraxia agnosia aphasia and loss of executive function especially mostly in the setting of a clear sensorium let's go ahead with the history there is no past history of similar illness and family history is insignificant that is a, it is a onset is approximately 65 years age no significant finding on the general examination vital parameter was stable and she was oriented to time place person mostly dementia happens in the setting of a clear sensorium motor and sensory system examination were normal so we have come to a diagnosis dementia female 65 years of age progressive deterioration of condition the most likely pathology is going to be alzheimer disease this is our clinical diagnosis so first thing how to approach clinically a case of dementia amnesia apraxia agnosia executive function loss aphasia which is not there in this question but the question here is not about the clinical diagnosis they are asking her mri brain would most likely show an abnormality in which of the following mark structure so we'll be showing you an mri brain picture and now sir will tell you how to go ahead with this now uh, the idea here is if you listen to the question very carefully and i am sure you have you know become very clear after listening to his discussion that how to approach the history and how to look at how the cognitive function is falling how the memory loss is there and they they have actually very beautifully summed up and said that diagnosis is alzheimer's dementia but the beauty of the questions in a exam like usmle is that they do not want the diagnosis you know they they think that you are able to understand the diagnosis and they want to know which of the following area is most likely to be in involved and they number the areas of the brain okay and if we go back and see the history we already know that the earliest area which is involved or the most classical area which is involved in alzheimer's dementia is hippocampus so there is loss of hippocampal volume that is the first change and later on on mri we might also see atrophy of the temporoparietal lobes as well but the question was where do you think the most characteristic abnormality will be so if i remove the entire question and i ask you which number out of these is representing the hippocampus that is the question now let us go one by one so look at my arrow in the image which is pointing at the number 1 okay so if you see this is the area of the temporal lobe are we on the outside of the temporal lobe or are we on the medial side what do you think we are on the medial side so we are the first arrow is pointing towards the mesial temporal lobe and where is the hippocampus located it is located in the mesial part so and if you see above it where the arrow is number 1 is pointing above it you see some space some css space that is the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle and below that you see some gray matter area that is the area of the hippocampus so what is my arrow pointing at hippocampus now let us imagine for a second if the hippocampus atrophies what would dilate now we know in brain whenever some area reduces in volume that space has to be filled by something so what what would fill up the space inferior horn of the lateral ventricle would fill up that space and will become dilated such dilatation is called as ex vacuo dilatation of the css space so now what are we expecting in a alzheimer's dementia patient the hippocampal volume will reduce and as a result the temporal horns or the inferior horns of the lateral ventricle will appear dilated that is what we are looking at so as a graduate please see where is the disease so if i am pointing towards the mesial side of the temporal lobe that is the most likely structure to be hippocampus now what is the structure number 2 marked in this image structure number 2 is a area of gray matter which is just below the which is just at the base of the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle so that is the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle and below it there is some arrow marked what is that head of caudate nucleus that is the area of head of caudate nucleus what is the number 3 marked in the image number 3 is a area of white matter which is connecting the two hemispheres so that means it's a commercial fiber which is connecting the two he hemispheres what is that corpus callosum so the point number 3 is corpus callosum number 4 number 4 
Number four is the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. Even if you say it is lateral ventricle, I will be happy with it. Number five is a slit like midline CSF space. What is that? That is the cavity of the diencephalon, which is the third ventricle. That is the third ventricle. And number six is in a cross section. Sometimes you see the uh, you know cisterns, perimesencephalic cisterns in a cross section. That is a cisternal space would be enough for you to answer that that is a cisternal space. Okay. Now, let me take you forward to another image. Now, based on what we have learned, we know that why did the examiner give you a coronal image? Because hippocampal volumetry is best done in a oblique coronal image through the hippocampus. So now, if you compare the images shown to you, image number 1 and 2, I have marked an arrow, red colored arrow, and I have tried to encircle the hippocampus in the first image. That is the normal appearance. Look at the second appearance. We have marked the hippocampus that is reduced in volume. But did you notice the striking feature? What is that? Inferior horn of the lateral ventricle is appearing dilated. That is helping you to look at, okay, there might be some hippocampal atrophy here. And that is how in Alzheimer's dementia, volumetric assessment of the hippocampus is done. If I take you forward, I just wanted to make sure that you understand that we have used a coronal image in this patient. And the first image is a coronal MRI image and I have painted the hippocampus for you. But tomorrow if in your USMLE step 1 or in NEMHANS, they might want to ask the same question but they show you a sagittal image. So I have marked the hippocampus on a sagittal image for you. And look at the third that is the axial image and you can see in the mesial side. Can you see my blue painted area? That is the hippocampus. And they, it is up to the examiner to choose any plane. Why did we choose coronal? Because that is the best suited to assess the hippocampus and especially the volumetry. That is why we chose that image. And what I will do here is, I will show you another example of a question. Look at the CT of the brain. I have put three numbers here. 1, 2, 3. What is the number 1 here? Can you tell me from my discussion so far? So, number 1 is at the base of the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. What is that? that is the head of the caudate nucleus. But that is not a question that is they are going to ask in USMLE. They will integrate. So, this in that they will give a history which is suggestive of Huntington's chorea and then they will say which area will be atrophied in this question. 1, 2, 3. So, one is head of caudate nucleus that will be atrophied in Huntington's chorea. What is number 2? Number 2 is the thalamus and number 3? Three, number 3 is pointing towards the towards the putamen towards the putamen and 1 and 3 that is the caudate and the putamen they together form the striatum ok but if I add the globus pallidus to it that becomes the corpus striatum ok so once you understand the basics we will play with one more question before we actually you know take you to the important points here now I will play the game other way around when I play the other, uh, other way around means is we classically look at a question history first image next now in this question we will look at the image first and then I will push the psychiatrist to tell me the history. Okay, Let us see. So here I have a patient in whom the outstanding feature is dilatation of the lateral ventricles. Okay, Lateral ventricles are dilated, grossly dilated. So if it was cerebral atrophy, okay, then also the ventricles would be dilated. And even if it is hydrocephalus, ventricle would be dilated. What is the difference between them? In atrophy, the ventricular dilatation is ex vacuo. That is happening as a result of loss of cortical volume. So, there will be sulcal prominence as well as ventricular dilatation. In this patient, this is an old person, okay, such an I am giving you a clue, old person in whom there is a gross ventricular dilatation, but the sulci are not dilated at all. They are not prominent at all. So, ventricular dilatation out of proportion to the sulcal prominence. This is a feature of normal pressure hydrocephalus. Now, I will ask Sachin to synthesize a question for you based on this. Now, this image can come along with a clinical question. Like sir has described, there are two types of ventricular dilatation. When we look for us in a CT scan, we look for ventricular dilatation and we also have to look the sulci. Now, this question comes, a patient having the features of dementia, that is amnesia, apraxia, agnosia, higher cognitive impairment whenever I have a patient of dementia who has along with it urinary incontinence 
urinary incontinence plus dementia and I look for something called as ataxia then that makes me suspect normal pressure hydrocephalus and this is a very important cause because it is one of the very common causes of reversible dementia as we know 15 percent dementias are reversible so if I come to know through ni some investigation my I clinically suspect dementia with ataxia plus urinary incontinence then we order for an MRI or a CT scan and when we get such finding our NPH diagnosis is confirmed and this is a treatable cause of dementia which is therapeutically very important and for the you know residents listening to us today maybe some psychiatry residents radiology residents what are other features which help us to think of hydrocephalus rather than atrophy would be dilatation of the inferior horns that is very important and periventricular ooze so in a patient with hydrocephalus one is that the ventricular dilatation would be more than the sulci sulci would actually be effaced second is inferior horn would be dilated third would be periventricular ooze which is a feature of hydrocephalus which would not be seen in atrophy that is very often you know asked to residents as well when they are appearing for exam and final words I will ask Sachin to ask me to tell me w do you uh, want to add about a few drugs or some treatment that would be useful for this patient Alzheimer's now uh, dementia the treatment the treatment is again a pharmacological treatment and a psychotherapeutic treatment pharmacological treatment is the mainstay because the neurotransmitter abnormality in Alzheimer is acetylcholine deficiency from the nucleus bacillus of Miniat. So, we will give a drug which is tends to increase acetylcholine that is acetylcholine esterase inhibitor which is the mainstay of the treatment of dementia mild to moderate dementia the drug recommended in guideline is donepezil. Donepezil is the drug which we give in to treat dementia. Okay, I think that's a very important message that you know when you talk of integrated MCQ it is not necessarily they will integrate uh, psychiatry with radiology they might integrate psychiatry with pharmacology and they will say which of the following uh, neurotransmitter uh, is deficient. Uh, deficient here and that becomes a you know neurophysiology question and yeah. then the answer becomes acetylcholine yes and, and that is the reason for using donepezil here exactly Correct. that's Correct. how we integrate psycho and pharmacology together yes so the idea of these videos is to make sure that you see how a specialist looks at a patient or a question which is pan modalities that means it has some neurological elements some psychiatric elements some anatomical elements some pharmacological some physiology some radiology you have to put everything together and that is the key thing that we want to do through these videos the purpose of these videos the dams unplugged series that we have initiated on youtube is to make sure that the people understand how to integrate medicine on the day of the exam this is the approach which is classically used in us only step one but it is increasingly becoming important in our PG entrance exam and this is the classic question that they will ask you in NIMHANS as well as Sachin would you know point out to you and to you know why we are signing off today if you like us if you like the video that we are doing it please write back to us you can write back to us at our Facebook pages or I would also recommend please follow DAMS daily page on YouTube for more such educational videos we are committed to integrating medicine for you thank you very much we are signing off God bless you thank you